This conference will now be recorded. So welcome everyone. It is Sunday, June 28th. I am Dr. Virginia Cowan, LMT, BC, TMB, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm welcoming you to the Alliance for Massage Therapy Education's uh, Sunday Conversations. We started these in March uh, with the uh, close down of massage school in-person education and CE. Uh, and um, uh, started to explore some issues related to uh, distance teaching and learning and eventually evolving into return to hands-on learning, hands-on practice. We have had everything from uh, um, looking at accreditation and making curriculum changes, uh, active learning. In our first presentation, I went through a bunch of different active learning strategies uh, because we hear lots of people are just doing lectures online, which can get dry really fast. Um, and then we've had uh, folks from ABMP talk about resources they have for educators and for students. And uh, last week, we had a, uh, two weeks ago rather, we had a brief preview. AFMTE is coming out with some guidelines for teaching and learning and recommendations for programs. Uh, those should be coming out any day now. Um, and that really is hopefully to empower programs that may have not been able to do any distance learning or uh, may not be allowed back in the classroom uh, in the fall semester. And so we're hearing uh, that that's happening in some of the states and even preparing for the next wave. So I'm gonna turn over next to Jody Scholes who is going to introduce our presenter and we'll be back a little bit later for Q&A. Yeah, so as a reminder, thank you, uh, Dr. Cowan, uh, Virginia. And uh, so again, welcome. Thank you so much for sharing part of your Sunday afternoon with us. Uh, the Alliance, my name is Jody Skulls, and I'm a board member at the Alliance for Massage Therapy Education. And the purpose, as uh, Dr. Cowan just explained, of these seminars, webinars, are, is to really bring our community together uh, with informative, up-to-date information about what are the best practices during these times that we've really never experienced before. Uh, today, we are blessed to have a presenter that really has a lot of pressure to get it right. Um, Ms. Michelle Donahue is a owner, a uh, franchisee uh, for Massage Envy. She is also the owner of the Hagerstown Massage School. So she is blending uh, a public clinic and a online and in-clinic massage school. She uh, has been dealing, as, as you will learn uh, within this uh, time frame, we're going to do kind of a Q&A type of uh, back and forth between Michelle and myself to get started. Uh, and then we're going to welcome your Q&A uh, at about 3.30 um, Eastern time. So in about 30 minutes, give or take, uh, you'll be welcome to ask any of your questions uh, that you may have specific to uh, what you hear today. Uh, we, I've really been looking forward to having this dialogue. I want to welcome uh, Michelle Donahue. Uh, thanks so much again for being here. Michelle, go ahead and tell us just a little bit about yourself. About myself. How, well, that, we have to, we're going to real Q&A at 3.30, right? So I'll keep it to, <laughs> keep it to 26 minutes. My, our Q&A is going to happen now. Um, and right. just some um, kind of, uh, guiding questions that our audience, I think, will benefit from, and then from that, um, the audience will jump in and either put in the chat their Q&A uh, or um, just chime right in because we've got a, a nice tight group today. So, but okay. um, tell about yourself, what attracted you to want to own a massage clinic? Well, okay, so the story is um, it doesn't start as as um, any kind of internal driving. Force, I call it my no accidents. The universe opened up a path and showed me part of my life's purpose, and here we are. Um, but it started as a friend of mine, um, a colleague of mine, who was one of my best friends at the time, and I were in corporate America together. Um, and that wasn't really a fit for either of our personalities. We're not big organization fans. Um, and he said, we found this thing. And I said, oh, my God, massage and strip mall is the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. Um, and that was probably 15, close to 15 years ago, maybe a little, you know, 16. It was the first wave of, of envy. And regardless of what we think of it now, um, it was, it, it exploded very quickly and sometimes well and not so well. And a few years later, he called and said, um, we, the, the model had, ex 
exploded and they had done very well, but they needed to build a foundation. Um, I knew nothing. That was 2012. I knew nothing about massage therapy whatsoever. I was absolutely a people manager and a process manager and a strategic person. Um, and I immersed myself um, in, and when I, when I say there are no accidents, um, the very first months that I show that I, I showed up in clinic, um, Massage Envy's partner that year, uh, corporate partner was the Arthritis Foundation. Um, and my mother actually uh, had rheumatoid arthritis from the time I was two. Um, and she died when I was 14 um, of an accidental overdose. Um, so the pain medicine killed her and I decided that I was in the right place. Um, and then I learned everything that I could, every single thing. I, it was absolute immersion. And now I'm that person that's like, you know, being very careful, although I am a lay person, so I'm not bound by the, the board. I am the person that says massage therapy will fix everything. I'm that person. They don't like me to talk out loud, but I do very loudly. Yeah. So you've I, gone yeah. zero to a hundred percent. Yeah. Your first couple of years, and then you decided that you wanted to actually own a clinic. I did. Well, first I was like, I'm out. This is too much. Seven days a week. All these people. All this energy. All these emotions. I can't. I can't do this anymore. Um, and, uh, and then a very good friend of mine said, well, what about this license in Maryland? And I said, nope, absolutely not. I didn't want to entertain it at all. Um, and then he said, well, you had five. How hard could one be? And I said, I mean, that's fair. And it was a, it's a, it's a different animal than outside of Metro DC. <laughs> so, um, I spent the past five years, um, building a cohesive cohesive A plus team and educating an entire community um, on the actual benefits of massage therapy and the fact that it's not just for birthdays and anniversaries. Yeah. And a somewhat rural community, correct? Yeah, it's I mean, yes, especially if you're a city person. <laughs> it's a, so um it's a it's kind of a hybrid. It's not there there's a lot of farmland around us. There are a lot of farms, a lot of rural things around us, but Hagerstown proper um, is a, it's a small city, but I like to say on a, on a cosmopolitan sophistication level, um, it's got about 10 years of catching up to do. Well, yeah, but it'd be, so you get to kind of wear both hats you know, for the our yeah. audience, you know, that it's not that you're on DC and it's not that you're isolated on a mountain. You know? That's right. Then from your ownership in the clinic, from your experiences with clients, from your interactions with your staff, you then decided you wanted to start a massage or own a massage school, start a massage school. Well, I mean, I, I, so as in my, in my previous incarnation, um, when I had five clinics under my charge, as it were, um, we definitely were closer to the city and, you know, massage schools. You know, those of you who know or have a preconceived notion about Envy, um, my clinic is smaller um, on purpose um, than the actual model um, because I, um, for lack of a better word, don't hire just anyone. They need to be A players because um, it's super important to me um, or at least have the potential to get to A. <laughs> so um, a lot of, a lot of schools, um, we had a phenomenal school the way that I, um, in Frederick, which is about 25 miles away, um, a phenomenal school, the, the kind of, the kind of place where you walk in and you feel it, you can feel it when you walk in through the door. Um, and that was a, just a complete eye opener, um, because the schools that had, I had been, um, around outside of DC weren't necessarily, I didn't get that same feeling, not to say anything that anything was wrong with them, but you definitely walked through the door and you said they're, they're creating, you know, they're creating healers here, which is what I believe. So um, they closed 
Um, and there, you know, like a lot of schools are facing a lot of different issues with management from, from afar and enrollment and then having to balance all of that out. Um, and I, before I actually had come here, I helped a friend of mine do a business plan for a new massage school um, where we, we thought that we could fix and build on, on a lot of the things that we had seen done correctly and incorrectly in his previous incarnation. Um, so when the, when the opportunity was presented um, to be in partnership with this online curriculum provider, um, wherein all of the hands-on is trained by my people who, you know, I'm blessed, blessed, blessed enough that uh, a lot of, most of my therapists, my core therapists came from Central Maryland. So they've gone to a school um, where they still taught intention, where they still, you know, it was, it was very much um, what I would think m my ideal massage therapy school <laughs> my education would be if that was something that I was going to do. Um, and so we had the opportunity to uh, craft um, and teach the way that I would like therapists to come to me already having been educated. So that's a really long answer, sorry. <laughs> Actually, I had about five questions in the middle of that and I really wanted to jump in, but I think what's what's, kind of a peripheral benefit in this session today is to hear the perspective of an employer who is a school owner, you know, of an employer who has dealt with several different schools, you know, both with you know, kind of on the spectrum of experiences as far as the level of education that was being uh, taught and the level of the intention. So it's just very interesting to hear um, the perspective of an employer who now moved into school ownership um, and the intention that you set um, for your school. Now, Brent, as you mentioned, you know, we'll get more into kind of that perspective, but franchise massage clinics typically treat a large number of clients. Um, so our audience can get a perspective before COVID. Um, how many massage therapists were on your staff? Um, Ten. 11, 11. One of them was pregnant, but 11. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, and then just again for perspective, about how many clients a week or a month was, uh, is your client, uh, before COVID, um, was your clinic seeing? Probably um, between 200 and 250 a week. About that, 250, Excellent. 300 so, a week. Yeah. Yeah. And just, you know, some of, um, so like I mentioned in the beginning of our QA, our, our, um, our kind of dialogue here is that um, 300, you know, 250 clients a week, most of our um, schools are not probably seeing that number. So you have some exponential considerations when it comes to COVID. Um, how long did your clinic have to close? Three months. We closed, yeah, three months. We yeah. closed March, March 17th. Um, and it was, there was some question as to whether or not we had to. And I thought that um, I wasn't going to roll the dice on an unknown. So we, as soon as, as soon as the governor of Maryland said, spa, I didn't wait for anyone to clarify that for me. I thought we had um, enough or, or zero information um, that I did not want to be responsible for um, killing someone's grandmother. Um, so we closed and we stayed closed until March, um, I'm sorry, June 15th with Monday, we reopened, so nearly three months. Oof, wow, wow, yeah. amazing. Uh, and you know, our massage schools and their clinics have faced the same thing. Um, so as you opened, it, the question is, what type of protocols uh, have you implemented that were either your franchise's recommendations, your franchise's requirements, um, and then um, maybe stuff that also stuff that you've done uh, that's gone um, beyond you know, what your franchise actually recommended or required? Well, yeah. So 
I mean, those of us who are on the on this call um, and who've who've been working and teaching forever um, know that potentially next to maybe surgeons, these, this community is probably the most um, OCD prone. We've done very our protocols for cleaning um, because you know with with the amount of of people that we have through this clinic. Um, before before the fall of 19 or the spring of 20, um, we had to prep for flu season. So flu season is just regular old flu season um, was definitely something that we took, that not took, but take seriously. Um, and so our protocols um, we're cleaning everything constantly, um, washing hands, you know, everything, everything that it's, it's very, it's a difficult position to be in to say, how can you up the game um, when you were pretty close to being, I mean, with the exception of masks um, and gloves and taking, taking temperatures um, and asking, we ask better questions now um, and people have to sign them in writing. I've chosen to make them do that on paper so that we don't have any technical difficulty of them just kind of going screen blind. Um, and so we have, we've definitely, our, our personal communication has gone up, which, you know, I always, is part of, it's part of progress um, when we get more technology, which I think personally takes away from, from a lot of our effective communication. Um, and so we have five, questions that we ask people they have to be buzzed in they can't not buzzed in because we're not that high tech um, so we keep the front door of the clinic locked um, they have to call when they get here Maryland's law right now is that if you're in a public space you must wear a mask so they cannot enter without a mask um, they we keep everyone um, staggered so that they're not people coming in and out um, and they have to call from the parking lot um, and to be admitted, um, which is good. And it didn't take us long to train them because now sometimes when we forget to lock the door, they still don't come in. <laughs> so, so they could actually all enter, but in two weeks, in two weeks, we've managed to train them that they can't get in the in the building. <laughs> so, um, but you know, there's a stand. You don't go you don't go past it. It's a table. Um, we don't reuse pens. Um, I well. Let me let me say that again. We do now that I found a UV light cleaning box, um, but at that moment um, they can take it, they can throw it away. But they're always every person that comes in is using a new pen. Um, you know, we had I had clearly I had everything cleaned. I had the carpets cleaned. I had all of our filters changed. I had um, there is there is a an actually a, a great um, it's called Clorox 360. Um, and it's an it's an electrostatic um, application. It's not bleach. It's just made by Clorox, um, and it uh, is gets in all of the areas that you can't normally clean and disinfect. Um, and it works for about six months. Um, and we used that at the end of 2019 for flu season, and we did not pass the flu at all um, last year. So not saying it's magic, but it's also very low. Um, no fumes. It takes not a long time to do. Um, and then I have the hazmat suits um, that are that are my low tech hazmat suits in terms of keeping. Um, we don't have therapists flipping their rooms after clients. We have them changing rooms, um, and then we have spa backs or the front of the house who don that. There's you know entire as much protective gear as I can get. Um, and they flip tables and disinfect rooms. And we got like seriously low tech, little tiny magnets to put on the door if the room is dirty so that the doors aren't open and people aren't going into clean rooms. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really just a matter of controlling the environment um, like on steroids, which is what we did before, but now it's like over the top. The, you know, touchless, touchless soap dispensers, um, and infrared touchless everything you can get and uv light uv light saved my saved my life because i was trying to minimize chemicals as well um so we have we have chemicals that we clean with hospital 
germicide. Um, but also the, the uh, UV light wand and UV light box. So <laughs> also a very long answer. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's like one of our, uh, may have a question uh, that he'd like to ask right now. It, are we just stretching, Pete? Oh, looks like Pete might be, oh, you're good. Okay. Um, so when I listen to all of this, Michelle, um, it, there's a lot of considerations that you have taken for your staff, you know, as well as your clients, right? Um, yeah. But um, it, how are your staff feeling? Like when, like when your staff returned, um, you know, when the clinic was open, um, did you have staff members who didn't decide not to come back? No. They were no. They were all ready. They all wanted to come back. And I mean, to be fair, I, you know, they, they all know, my team knows that they come before all of our clients. Um, and so, you know, they trust, they trust that I'm going to protect them. Um, and they also know why they're on this planet. And I was actually, I was, I was blown away. I mean, I didn't lose touch with them for three months. We're a pretty tight team. Um, but also, I mean, everybody was so happy to be back together um, and they were happy to go to work because that's what they're on. That's, they know, they know that all of their clients were without them for three months. Um, and it, none of them, the only person we lost was a front of the house person because she got a different job while we were closed. And something that I've heard from other franchises, and I guess you could confirm or correct me on this, was that all of your staff members um, are employees, correct? Yes, they are. Yeah, and that means that they actually qualify for unemployment, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maryland had a <laughs> Maryland had um, a really unfortunate they decided that they were going to implement a new unemployment system uh, in a pandemic and it was a nightmare, but yes, they did all qualify because they are all employees. Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you that, um, you know, in our ever-changing and evolving world of massage therapy, outside of the COVID considerations, is there are, you know, there is a discussion to be had with our students, you know, our massage therapy students, as far as what is the difference between independent contractor and employee and sole proprietorship. Um, and so um, you know, just making sure that in our business modules that we look at the, the pros and cons of, of all the different types of employment that are out there. Um, it's something that I hadn't ever thought of you know, when, um, when I was you know, looking at the benefits of being an employee, um, I could have never ever thought there would be a pandemic and, and that massage therapists would like the clinics would close. Yeah. I mean, so um, the uh, many, for many of the massage therapists, they had, you know, they didn't have six months of savings that they could draw. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and that was, um, I do. That was something that ended up. Being, <laughs> <I do. laughs> um, so that ended up being um, kind of a silver lining, you know, if you will, if we can find, you know, any silver linings in this situation. Um, well, let's move on to your school. Uh, tell us a little bit about your school. So I have to try not to be super excited about it because I feel like it's a completely different school than most of the people on this call. <laughs> um, so the the online <laughs> portion is provided. <laughs> What did you say? Uh, yeah, it used to be because uh, you were, you're, I mean, in the sense that many, many schools did not have online classes. And now yeah. almost every school <laughs> has online classes. Right, right. So, so that is the entire curriculum. We partner with a curriculum provider and they were prior to um, what the way that they're providing the curriculum now, which, oh, by the way, is Compta endorsed, which Super exciting for me. Um, I'm sh maybe not as exciting for you guys, but you know, this is the only person, this is the only audience where people get excited about Compta because they know what it is. Um, and I try to explain it, and unless they know what it is, they don't get excited about it. <laughs> so, so, 
um, the online portion, the uh, all the books, all of the books, all of it entirely is done on in online form uh, format um, at your own pace, even potentially. And then all of the hands-on and clinic hours are taught by um, my team. Um, even though in this in this uh, context, they actually are subcontractors for the school, the curriculum provider. So you know, in on a on a good day, we call it my school. I am officially facilitating the hands-on portion of the program. Um, which makes me super excited because, like I said, I was I was blessed enough to have a lot of a lot of really good good people, including the head of curriculum um, from that massage school in Frederick, on my on my team. So we are uh, super super excited to um, be able to put um, really really quality massage therapists out into the world, whether they work for us or not. So, and by us, I mean me. <laughs> so that we're, there's no confusion. There's no confusion. I, it's the royal us. So, yeah. So pretty much all of our educators that are listening today or watching this later on have online delivery now of classes on some level. Mm -hmm. um, what okay. are some of the challenges um, that uh, your teachers have had to overcome? I would say the number one, the number one, I'm gonna guess you said challenge, and I, because I'm, I'm not sure where some stuff is cutting out a little bit, but I would say that the number one thing, honestly, is that you have, um, that I'm not an online learner, I'm not an independent learner. I, if this were the way that I had to learn, I would fail, um, and so, the challenge is um, having making sure that the actual um, the actual book work is being digested um, in a way that um, a is not just set up to just pass a test, um, but also you know you have you have students that don't understand um, a particular um, you know whatever I'm going to say A and P for fun because it's it's a hurdle. Um, but they don't understand, they aren't quite getting that concept. And um, I think the biggest challenge has, has been that you have teachers who want to teach um, and they're, the good thing is that they can, they can address it when they're in hands-on. Um, but the biggest challenge prior to that beginning was I don't get this concept and then having, stopping that student from unraveling um, because they don't think that they're bright enough or they don't have they don't have immediate access to explain that in a way that their brain can uh, assimilate. That's the number one that's the number one issue is is making sure that all of that material, um, especially like the heavy material is is well understood um, in spite of the delivery. Yeah, no, I hear you there. One of the questions that just came in up in the chat is, what? how many hours is your program? 620 in Maryland. Right, and so for your clinic, yeah, that's that's the minimum, is that right, 620? 600 is Maryland, is Maryland's minimum, yeah. Uh, but Maryland also has that 600, they have the two layer designation with the LMPs and the RMPs, um, and you know, regardless of how I feel about it, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so 600, 600 is Maryland's requirement, and 620 is the program. Mm -hmm. And so the RMT, uh, could you speak to that for a moment? As far as it's a a, a longer program, correct? Sure. Well, sort of. Um, the RMP, so in Maryland, you have RMP, which is registered mass, uh, massage, massage practitioner, and then you have an LMP designation, which is uh, licensed massage therapist. Um, until recently, the only required, the only difference was that the, um, the LMP had to have 60 college credits, um, and 
you know, when I, when I first got to Maryland nearly what, about five years ago, it didn't matter what those credits were in. So if you had somebody who had gone to school for uh, needlepoint and they got an associate's in it, they were a higher, um, you know, designation in Maryland than somebody who'd been a massage therapist for 20 years. Um, and the designation, the way that Maryland has it right now, LMTs, um, it's, it's a healthcare setting insurance um, reimbursement category. That's, that is for lack of a better term. I mean, that's, that's what it is. So healthcare settings where, um, where they bill insurance in the state of Maryland, you have to have, you have to be an LMT. Now they did recently change that so that the 60 credits must be in an actual healthcare related um, activities, but that's not anybody that had that designation seven years ago who had was a computer associates in computer programming is an LMT in the state of Maryland. So you can clearly tell well, I have a that. feeling and about it. <laughs> what? <laughs> well there's a uh, there's a few uh, there's a few questions coming up in the chat and I'm looking at our time. I want to make sure we have time uh, for everyone to um, ask questions if they have them. One specific question that just came up is, uh, could you speak to your state and federal funding available for your students? State and federal. So federal, um, the school does not have federal funding. Um, and that is, you know, I don't have to tell all of you, or maybe some of you, but um, how long it that takes to get. And from my perspective, um, I hope that they don't ever get it because I think that a lot of that federal, what I've seen in the bigger communities and the bigger cities with the schools that didn't make it was that that federal, that machine getting on that wheel um, with the federal funds had a tendency to potentially drive some numbers that weren't necessarily, necessarily conducive to the product um, and the education that was coming out. Um, so in the, the state of Maryland, the program actually has been the, uh, the people that are driving that. So federal is zero, um, but also because there is not a brick and mortar building um, and there's no, there's no rent to be paid or mortgage just by me, <laughs> okay. um, there is uh, the cost is is very very reasonable now in the state of Maryland if um, because the the curriculum provider which is now officially a school um, they have done a lot of work with the uh, DLLR in the state of Maryland and so they have it approved as a, an apprenticeship apprenticeship program um, in the state of Maryland and that when that therapist student graduates and goes to work, the state of Maryland will basically pay their tuition. Um, the piece that they don't cover, that they don't reimburse, um, and I don't pretend to know how this all works because I am the person that just reaps the benefit of how it all works and makes me really happy, but um, we also, I also as an employer, anyone who, um, any student that I decide to hire then gets a scholarship from me. Um, and then their education is, I mean, I can't tell you how reasonably inexpensive it is because you guys don't really know me, so won't be dramatic, but it's very, <laughs> very, very, very reasonable. So, um, I would say that the apprenticeship, the apprenticeship approval, um, and, you know, the program is just, it, it's phenomenal. It's also an approved, uh, an approved program in the spouse, active duty military spouse education program. And I'm sure there's a lot of letters that are, <laughs> that go with it, but um, it's really, it's really very exciting. So um, no federal dollars that I know of, um, unless you're active duty military or active duty military spouse, um, in which case then you are, there, there are some federal dollars for uh, for that education. 
Right. So I'm just looking at the time and I uh, want to get to a few. I want to transition into specifically questions that have been showing up in the chat and also mm -hmm. let some of our audience chime in um, to ask questions. Uh, and I will say this again towards the end of our session today, but thank you so much uh, for uh, taking time out of your Sunday. I know your clinic is open right now. You're at your clinic and, um, yes, and that there's probably... <laughs> say that again? Oh, no. I said, yes, I am. I'm very excited about it. And I've locked the door and threatened them all within an inch of their lives. You better answer the phone. Don't knock on the door. Don't, yeah. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I know you're actively like uh, working right now. So thank you mm -hmm. for um, representing yourself as a franchisee um, and your brand as far as Massage Envy um, and also for speaking as a school owner uh, and uh, someone who is in the online space full time. Uh, other than your clinic hours, it's it's really helpful to hear you know, how you're um, how you're managing all that. And one of the questions uh, that came up in the chat, and uh, uh, Dr. Cowan, Virginia, you can feel free to help me because I'm not sure uh, how to see that right now. Um, but is how many students uh, do you have in the class? So our first our first class, um, we had two. Our second class, which um, part of what we what we also I mean it was very grassroots too, um, but our second class right now as of today we have eight students enrolled for September, um, and what they're seeing. Um, sorry. How many would you have in the classroom at one time? Um, well, that. That depends, obviously, um, on how m how many people we are still working on. I I would really like a class of 20, and by class I mean 20 students who will start, um, and we will address how we break that down based on what our laws are at that moment, um, because you know we don't we don't know. I don't. I'm not. I'm not a, a long-term planner when it comes to this right now. We kind of roll with a lot of things. Um, so, you know, if we have to split it up into three separate, three separate groups, um, you know, I, that's a really good problem for us to have um, because that means that we have a lot of people. And there are a lot of nurses, by the way, those of you who are looking for places to, to find new, uh, new students, a lot of nurses, don't want to don't want to do it anymore after this. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a message that we've heard over and over again during these uh, webinars, is that recruiting is strong. So that's yeah, I don't, very encouraging. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how it's. I mean, you know, does it help? I think that I have heard more people say, "I've always wanted to do this, and I this is the time that I had to sit and reflect." about and make a change. Yeah, no, that's excellent. So I'm going to open the floor uh, up to uh, students, Pete, uh, Sandy, uh, all of you that, um, all of you that uh, had uh, questions in the chat that I didn't get to, please feel free to chime in now. And I will mention too that Michelle has uh, said that Anyone from the audience, anyone listening now or later, is welcome to reach out to her, uh, and we will uh, make sure you get her contact information if you have follow-up questions. I'm going to jump in real quick, and I want to answer a question that was posed to me, but just remind everybody that you can unmute yourself and speak. It's a small group, um, but someone uh, asked if anyone on the call was dealing with students in the classroom now with FSMTB guidelines, um, and so we have had a couple of previous presentations. Uh, people are already back in the classroom, but I do want to give a shout out that AFMTE is coming out with guidelines specific for education. They're not only specific to hygiene, but for teaching and learning. Those were supposed to come out two weeks ago. They're delayed for some reason, but we will be putting those in place. So um, hang in there for that. But there are many states where people are already back in class. So Sandy, I don't know. Are you guys back in class yet? We're still um, uh, 
Some are. Some of them have gone back. It's been uh, very dicey in Michigan to even know what's going on. I suspended all my classes until the fall. Um, so there's been guidance as far as massage therapy, but there's been no guidance in terms of the massage. So or for the education. So schools have just assumed if the massage therapist can go back to work, the schools can open. That's pretty much where we're at. So, um, and I, I, my head about shook off with lots of yeses during the presentation. Uh, I also own a massage therapy school forever. And four years ago, we, my family opened a massage green franchise in mm -hmm. conjunction with the school. Now, my model for the school is an actual brick and mortar school like most people think about, but the model you're using for school is very different. I've been very intrigued by it and I've watched it and I'm not sure everybody is understanding that. So you actually contract with a, a company that provides all of the lesson plans and the students do the program online through their platform. Yes. The only thing you do then is, and I think it's a great idea, um, is you do the hands-on portion right in your clinic. You don't have an actual school brick and mortar like people want to think. It's an excellent model and not understood. So congrats on my part for you having the initiative. Do you know how many others have contracted with this provider? Um, I think that so they they are they started um, as a curriculum provider for some colleges, um, and they had no intention of um, one. They had, had didn't they didn't see it going this way. Um, they didn't really want to be their own school, <laughs> but. Um, there's so there's some independence and you know he was um, you know from my perspective we as a as a brand um, as the 800 pound gorilla brand that sometimes people enjoy and sometimes people do not um, it, we sometimes move more slowly in terms of you know not not touting something before it's been proven um, mm -hmm. And so, I would say that they're getting. Um, it is. It is no longer uh, as of today. I don't believe I, anybody. You could pick up your phone and call, and and say, "I own a business. How do I do this?" Um, it is not yep. a massage and be owned thing no. at all. No, it has nothing no. to do with us. So. Um, I think the franchises in general who are having trouble um, staffing or any yeah. place a business is having trouble staffing, uh, this is a very exciting but brand new and going to run up against some confusion uh, yeah. model where they, you know, you contract with an online provider that does all the didactic, everything. It's all done. Yep. Everybody yep. just participates. And yes. then they're contracted with a a business that does mm -hmm. the hands on. Um, yeah. Right. But in some states, mm -hmm. online learning is not allowed at all. And so this is something that you know we don't have a lot of consistency with this. I mean, now this seem, this model seems to follow what's happening with online nursing programs, uh, and those mm -hmm. exist in all the proprietary schools around the country because so many, as we all know, people go to nursing school and don't end up being nurses. But for massage therapy, there are some states that did not allow any distance learning during the pandemic. So schools just stopped. And um, in terms of coming back, they still are not allowing it. And that's even for didactic courses. So, you know, the fact that this model exists, and someone keeps asking what the platform is. And so, you know, I, I just answered Pete's question. He's asked a couple of times. There are so many distance learning platforms. This might be a proprietary platform. I mean, I know if anybody's had any experience with Pearson Education, Pearson's eCollege was their own platform that they um, uh, they customized and made bespoke versions for different schools. So there are so many different um, online learning platforms. They all pretty much look the same. But, you know, the real question is for, um, uh, you know, in the states, getting state approval, right? And so, Michelle, you're ta you have, have talked about the two different tiers. My question for you mm -hmm. is, 
are your students RMTs or LMTs? Or is, is it just the, the separate at college? The end, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a separate college requirement. So um, they would, if they started off with, if they have an associate um, in uh, health related field, um, they can apply to the LMTs at the end. Um, and I will say that this is, it's not just a curriculum, like I don't, I, I don't, I didn't have to do all of that heavy lifting. Um, no. They are an actual school, they are an actual school. So, um, you know, in terms of, yeah, there are still states obviously that have, that have issues. Um, and hopefully we're working through that. I mean, I know that, you know, even from what I heard, um, it, it's upsetting to me that, that there are still, you know, you guys are, are trying to trying to shift and pivot and um, do all of these things, and we're not going to let that happen. Seems to me, you know, well, you know what it potentially seems to me. This is a full school that you share enrollment with. Actually, they enroll in that school that's all yeah. online yeah. and then you cooperate with them for yeah. that for you to teach the hands-on and how many hours of that do you have to do oh well we have to do all of their their learning and then all of their clinics so all of their clinic hours so 323 i mean it's it's about half i believe yeah. i mean it seems like it's never ending but yeah but that's partially because we were closed for three months yeah. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's a really exciting model to me. I'd like to. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think so too, Sandy. When I first learned about it, and uh, I I connected um, with uh, the company. It's called M M like Mary M Power. And uh, after a conversation um, with uh, a principal at that company. Uh, they became members of the Alliance. They were um, present at the Alliance Congress uh, mm -hmm. in 2019. And um, since being at the Educational Congress, they have had their curriculum endorsed by Compta. Yep. So this is, this is a program that is really understanding uh, excellence in education. In my opinion, so. Yeah. But so, it's brand new. <laughs> well, so coming back to the idea of no online learning, because someone said no online learning in some states, you know, it, it's a big question. And there are good practices, but this is also, you're describing, Michelle, an asynchronous online environment. And so ultimately, way back to one of Pete's first questions, is it a hybrid? The answer is no the whole education uh, experience is a hybrid. And it's a hybrid because they do some portion online, but they do have to do their hands-on face-to-face. Um, so um, we have had some discussion in the previous sessions about some programs doing hands-on via distance. I don't think anybody here would say you could do the whole thing distance learning, but uh, you know the fact that distance learning is implemented unevenly in different states, um, and we have lots of different requirements, um, you know, hopefully, some of the innovation that's happening in innovative programs like this will spawn more innovation in massage education. Um, and uh, it, it's, I guess the question really will be over the longer term, the only metric we ever have to measure whether a program is effective or not is passing a board exam or passing a license exam, right? There's not, and, and then do people actually stay in the profession? Mm -hmm. So, you know, over the longer term, I think, you know, we're hearing a lot in higher ed about learning deficits for students who just didn't thrive in the online environment. Um, and, uh, you know, there are some other students who do exceedingly well. And I think we're going to have to wait and see, uh, you know, what outcomes are like on the different, you know, the MBLEX and NCV and things like that. And even, I mean, New York has their own licensing exam. Um, I think that's something we're really going to have to look at. But, you know, meanwhile, coming back to your model, Michelle, what's really intriguing is that you have a lot more uh, control over, the learning environment and the student's learning experience to bring them into more of a real world. It's almost like you're a full externship, right? And so you're able yeah. to 
or internship. And, and so getting that type of education, the hands-on component in a professional environment is very different than schools that have their own clinic or the schools that you know, farm students out. Mm -hmm. And so that part I think really is, uh, it, it gives you a chance to see where there will be needs as you have bigger classes uh, where students have trouble you know, applying and integrating and that's really a big thing. And I have a question. Sure. Um, so it sounded like um, you had a couple of students to start and you're shooting for 20. Does that mean that you would need to have more space or would yes. you operate your school in a different way? Uh, you know, your training in a different way? I'm just curious how that would yeah. scale up. Well, both. Um, so one of the challenges um, I will be very honest. One of the challenges was making sure that we could accommodate classes and not cannibalize our business. Um, and so we have arranged, I mean, it's, it's just a hands-on scheduling issue, but I, um, I have set out before, before we even got to uh, this, I, my goal is to need another space. Um, because there is no, the way that, the way that our clinic is set up, there's, I mean, it's not, it's not conducive to teaching 20 people, um, unless I close the whole thing. And that's, you know, because of all the rooms. So there's no open space. There's no, it's, it's not, we could, we could do some lecture if we needed to, to catch up or if somebody needed help. Um, but in terms of like working on, working on actual bodies, could, could we do it? Yes. We would have to micromanage every minute of every day um, in a way that would make everyone really grumpy. So I think that we're going to need more space. So it sounds like you're going to have a cohort that will arrive to your location having finished the online classwork. So they, not always, um, but they do have a minimum um, that they have to get through 100 hours um, and that of, of online, because I mean, real, realistically, mm -hmm. you know, they don't want to be in a position where they have a person that they're sending who, who may not show any aptitude for independent learning um, and then have to deal with the fallout of them not finishing, right? Um, so we um, have decided though that we're not going to, to do a staggered start um, because I think that something gets lost in that in that translation if you have a rolling admissions for for body work situation at least that's what i've what i've has been my observation i i think that that's a it's just you know um, i'm in full agreement but, i'm in full agreement with you yeah. the wheel does not work yeah so we um we definitely don't um I personally make sure that I interview everyone that is being considered um, prior to them being enrolled um, and so that I can be very honest about you, you know your personality will you will never you'll never be part of this team um, and there are going to be some people that don't want to be like we have some nurses that are trying to um, trying to kind of punch up their offering at, uh, we have a very good relationship with our local hospital um, and they, they're never going to work for me, but that's okay. Sure. But I don't need to interview them, but I do still because there no toxic behavior can come into my clinic. So, um, you know, if, if you want to go to school and you can pay your dollars, then you're gonna have to find another hands-on place if you're not the person that I need you to be when you're here. So, um, and, and I'm not trying to monopolize here. It just sounds beautiful what you're doing. Are there other programs that you're aware of so far, or is this the first? And congratulations if you're the first. Oh, well, thanks. I don't think we were the first. We were the first Envy for sure. Um, but, um, you know, because I don't, I don't have time for other people to, to stand on the sidelines when I, when I know something is a good idea. Um, but I know that, that there are independent, there are independent clinics all over the country, um, who have, who have successfully done this, um, and, you know, there, there are pockets of them. 
Um, but you know, in terms of in terms of uh, the franchises, <laughs> because it's not just us, right? Um, I don't know who's I don't know who's on board, but I know for sure I was the first one. You heard it here first. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to reiterate that the name of this organization is M Like Mary M Power, and they would welcome um, further investigation into their program. Uh, they are transparent, especially if you mention that you're an Alliance member. Um, they are an active member of. Uh, the Alliance and uh, I'm sure would welcome further questions as would Michelle if you have uh, if you yeah. think of something after we wrap up today. Hey it's Brenda. Um, you may not hey, Brenda. Um, um, just because it may be relatively new um, Maryland was the only state that did have a college requirements for that LMT license, but the Maryland Massage Board has recently moved to eliminate the RMP, and there will be only an LMT with college requirements going forward. The exact deadline for that I'm not aware of, but um, I know that representatives of the Alliance and ABMP and AMTA and our school have been invited to be on a committee to see what that might look like. So, um, yeah, the RMP is. And Brenda, you're a director, in, director in, of um, education at, at PMT. Massage training. Yeah. It's Silver Spring, Maryland. Yeah. So it's going to it's going to be a really interesting future for education in Maryland. So. Uh, well, if you need my help. <laughs> yeah, right we'll up the be, road. We'll, right up the we'll, road. Yep. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're actually coming up almost on the four o'clock hour. Um, and I did want to uh, chime in and say there has been something very nice about these sessions. And that is, and I started to say before, I didn't realize Sandy and I were talking at the same time, but as massage educators and as massage therapists, we're not powerless. We're actually, we, we have the potential to um, make a difference. And in this pandemic, uh, unfortunately, we've seen, uh, you know, some uh, some opinions move forward uh, and influence policies, and others not. And um, and you know, we still know that there's a lot of divisiveness in the in the profession, in terms of practicing, going back to school, and certainly big differences in states. And someone had mentioned in the chat they're licensed in uh, New Jersey and Connecticut. Uh, I'm in New York State, and we're a whole different animal, I think, like Nebraska in terms of the requirements. So uh, one hope, I think in just continually trying to bring people together through the alliance is that we can look at how much more we're alike than how we're different um, and look at models that are different like uh, you know the curriculum that Michelle is using um, for her school and you know and the fact that people are still surprised that they're you know online learning still not allowed in some states um, and there are other people who are teaching all their hands-on courses via webcam right now. So, uh, you know, hopefully we can continue involvement. So for those of you who are not members of the Alliance, uh, in those of you, even if you're watching the replay, uh, do consider joining because we will be working on strategic planning. Um, I'm speaking as an outgoing board member here. Um, we will be working on strategic planning and really looking at ways to continue dialogue so that we can all come away with ideas um, that will better serve not only our students, but uh, serve our communities because we're training the next generation of people who are going to be out there massaging people. Um, so, uh, Jody, I'll toss it back to you before I uh, end the recording. Any final thoughts? Just want to thank everybody again for taking time uh, here on this Sunday afternoon and for all those people listening after uh, the live session. Thank you so much for contributing, you know, just your time and your energy and uh, your intention to this massage education community. Um, as a board member for the Alliance for Massage Education, I really appreciate um, your feedback, your experience, uh, and your willingness to share. So, um, so thank you. Uh, and I believe there are no announcements at this time, uh, but we look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for being here. Yes. Bye. Bye.